episode of Mind, Money and Marketing with me, Joe Barnes, and uh, I am very, very excited to introduce you to this week's guest. Uh, he is an absolute superstar. I've known him for a couple of years now and watched his company go from strength to strength. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Hello, Nathan Latka from Heyo. <laughs> Hey guys, how are you? It's good to be with you today, Joe. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you for uh, appearing on the show. I know you are in, where actually are you based? I know it's 9 o'clock where you are. Where are you based? Yeah, we're based on the East Coast here in Virginia, actually, in the United States. In Virginia, okay. Yep. yep. So it's it's nine o'clock in the evening where you are. It's eight o'clock in the morning where I am. That's the joy of technology. I absolutely <laughs> love it. Um, but Nathan, um, I'm very excited to talk to you because your company has just exploded in the last couple of years. And when I first met you, you were Lejour. Yeah, you had a, you had a company called Lejour, um, and then uh, in the last, I think it was about a year ago. I'm, you can tell us the exact dates. You changed to Heyo.com, and I've seen you everywhere. I've seen your emails, and I see your um, ads and posts on Facebook, and uh, it's absolutely fantastic. So, if you could just give us a little bit of background about you and your company, um, and uh, and what's happening with Heyo right now. Sure, yeah. So the company started at Joe about two years ago. It was a really exciting time. You know, for me, I was still young. I was about 21 at the time here at Virginia Tech studying architecture and business finance. And we saw a big opportunity to help all the folks like your viewers create Facebook landing pages or applications because this is were really difficult to do. You had to know how to code, you had to have a lot of time, or you had to work with designer or freelancers. And we made it really, really easy. So what I did is we started growing the team that was called Lejour, and we had a lot of people really loving the platform. So we were really fortunate, and it got to the point where we were getting so much word of mouth marketing, and we were looking at our back end and saw people, no one could spell Lejour properly. So they would love the brand, they'd say Lejour, Lejour, but they wouldn't remember it the day after to then search us and find us and use the product. So we had a really great opportunity. We raised money from extremely intelligent people here in the United States that have helped us continue to grow. Um, and one of the things that we did is we made a decision to rebrand as Heyo, H-E-Y-O. And we have a rule. You know, whenever we say Heyo here in the office, you have to say it with some umph. So you kind of got to go Heyo with a little fist pump. And that's how, <laughs> that's how we do it now. <laughs> That's absolutely fantastic. Yep. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so, so and, and you know we are we are tough workers. I mean, Facebook changes all the time, and I'll show you guys. It's you know nine o'clock here. So up here we've got you know a, a bunch of folks of our team, and back here we've got a, a bunch of the development team that's actually still here working on the latest release, along with our our kitchen here, and uh, you know we just have a lot of fun. <laughs> So when we first uh, uh, met, gosh, it, it was it was probably early days of Lejeune when you and I first first had conversations, yeah. and um, I had developed, if you remember rightly, I'd developed my own kind of little piece of software um, for people to be able to create the Facebook landing tabs, and um, just from my own personal experience, uh, I have found it really tough. The whole kind of software, <laughs> I don't want to go near software ever again <laughs> as long as I'm alive. I will, I will, anybody Anybody else can do the software. I'll just recommend it to people. How have you found that? Obviously, you know, you you are a software as a service company essentially, um, and you have to find very good developers and very good programmers and coders. Um, how have you found that actually building software and and, and marketing software over the years? Well, well, let me just start by saying, Joe, I think you are way smarter than me when it comes to teaching online and doing programs like this, like what you're doing. And your audience is so lucky that you've got, you're streaming this content to them all the time. So I think you're crushing it doing what you're doing. Uh, the software space is difficult, but boy, oh boy, I mean, it is exciting because you can touch and impact so many people so quickly. And one thing that I love to focus on is something called we measure internally called LTV, which is lifetime value of customers. And this is a range of things, both qualitative and quantitative. Quantitative might be ARPU or average revenue per user um, or, or mitigating churn. On the qualitative side, it's things like a net promoter score. So we'll ask our clients on a scale of 0 to 10, 10 being most likely, 
how likely are you to recommend this to two of your closest friends? And so it's really cool you start building these relationships in, as opposed to these one-time launches that you do every now and then, then you gotta do over and over like during the year to continue building that revenue stream. So we have really impacted a lot of people, over 150, people in over 150 countries use us. There's a lot of business all over, ranging from young kids that have launched armband businesses with us, now, all the way up to Fortune 500 brands that use us, and we're growing like a weed here in Blacksburg, Virginia, having the time of our lives. And I'm guessing you've got, you have to stay really on top of all the changes. All the di I mean, constantly, the uh, Facebook and the social networks are constantly making changes. They're changing their APIs and their everything else that I don't know the acronyms for. Uh, and I'm guessing that you, as a company, have to be almost a step ahead of, of where they're going with the changes all the time. Yeah, you look, we whenever Facebook makes changes, we like to do our best to put our best foot forward as quickly as possible and deliver the most value to the market. And we actually see during those times of change, that's when we have the most customers leaving other providers and joining us. Because what typically happens is the other providers, they're stagnant, they're stale, they don't change. And the other providers all of a sudden start seeing their user bases churn and they start freaking out and you know, many times, Joe, they'll actually go out of business because it's very difficult. So we've been fortunate. We found a niche. We act quick. Um, and I know that you're actually going to ask some questions, I think, that I'll get into some details of even how this exact thing went out with, uh, with timeline contest updates. So it's about being agile, quick, and delivering value to your customer base. Actually, I'm, I'm going to launch into some some questions actually now about tabs and mobile and contests and stuff. But before I do, I must just say that that's something I've really noticed about you and your company over the last couple of years. Whenever anything has changed, you have been absolutely on it. I remember when you launched the um, the new um, the, the being able to change the tabs and amend the tabs in Facebook when the new timeline came out and the fact that people could uh, you know amend straight from there with the timeline contest as well I saw you came straight out um, with you know your software being able to do stuff with the actual timeline contest on the timeline itself and all that kind of stuff so very very impressive company well thank you Joe and I have to tell you there are so many people that 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 come to me and say you you might be the quickest moving Facebook act company ever because they've seen a lot they're really smart marketers and that's something that we really pride ourselves in customer care being agile delivering as much value as we can as quickly as possible so let's talk about your apps because I know that's what a lot of viewers are going to be very interested in. Uh, the, the people watching this are active users of Facebook. They have Facebook business pages. They really want to increase engagement. They really want to increase their followers and fans on their Facebook pages and be able to provide great service and great value. So can you tell us a little bit about how they can best go about using tabs on Facebook? Because obviously since all the tab changes and timeline changes, it's almost been a bit Mm, are tabs as kind of useful as they used to be? Should people still be using them? Um, you know, what's your, what's your views on the best way that small business owners can be using tabs on Facebook? Yeah, fantastic question. And I will tell you this. Um, there are many, many uh, CEOs of other companies that are trying to keep up with Heyo who will tell you, that uh, you need tabs, uh, no matter what. You need tabs because they're scared. They don't know how to change and adapt. I'm going to tell you right now, I believe okay, that timeline contests and engagement in the feed is, is very much the future of what small businesses and where small businesses are going to be able to get the best return when it comes to Facebook. And what I will tell you is that once you're using timeline contests effectively, to drive up the affinity score with your fans, then it's a great opportunity to build in a more robust backend through applications to do things like capture email, drive sales, integrate with the CRM, run contest promotions and deals actually in those applications where there's more real estate. So there's definitely a duality of how they'll work together, but I think this is fantastic for small businesses. Uh, you know, it was exciting for us, Joe, when this came out because it meant that Facebook and Heyo and our mission is now very much aligned. If you, you, I bet you remember this, Facebook one would let large brands get away with kind of breaking the, the, the terms of service rules and running contests and feed if you had a minimum spend of say 10K a month on them. Do you remember this? 
Mm-hmm. And and what's happened now is they've finally done away with all the shenanigans. They've they've flattened and leveled the playing field and said any brand, whether you're the the pizza entrepreneur listening right now or you're you're the stay-at-home mom trying to build a recurring revenue business or you're the seasoned executive at a, working inside a marketing firm at a large company, the leveling the the play the the uh, playing field was leveled. And so 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 that's really interesting, I think. Um, and I think I think that will continue to be the future as anybody can do it. And once you grow the affinity score, being able to use the apps to time the back end is really exciting. So you think that this uh, this announcement of the timeline contests was a breakthrough moment for Facebook? I can put, I absolutely agree. Um, and I don't think I'll tell you this. I don't think it will be realized uh, with a with a big bang. In other words, with past changes, you'll see all these people going, "I don't want the change. I don't want it." And you'll hear this: people are revolting, and you know, you know giving their firstborn to Facebook to change the make the changes back the other way. I mean, this wasn't big in that regard, but I will tell you, um, we launched a piece of software almost immediately when this change came out. And we are seeing some things on the back end, Joe, that are just incredible when it comes to actual driving results in the form of likes, comments, shares, and impressions through timeline contests. And what this is also doing is we're seeing long tail effects so that when, say, my fist is a brand, when this brand runs their first timeline contests, well, what happens is that brand content is then going to show up higher and higher in the news feeds of the fans that engage with that content. And getting your the brand... The brand being able to get the content higher in the newsfeed is very exciting when you consider that in Facebook's Q2 earnings call, the DAU number, their daily active user number, which they measure by logins, was 699 million people. So Joe, what that what that means, 699 million people are logging onto Facebook every day. Well, guess what? When you log onto Facebook, you have no choice. Everybody lands on the newsfeed. If you can position your brand to be on that piece of real estate, I believe that piece of real estate will very quickly become as valuable as being first page of Google. Well, can you give a couple of steps then that you think people should be taking when creating time, when creating these contests on the timeline? What, so, what sort of contests are you suggesting that, that business owners should be doing? Yeah, what I would prefer to do is I can give examples like that, but I love to give the actual sentence architecture that we've seen to drive the most engagement. And I'll give you an example. Um, Zeppoli's is a local Italian restaurant here in Blacksburg. And I'm going to tell you what they would have said before Heyo, uh, or before listening to your content, Joe. They would have said something like, um, we just created a brand new pizza recipe. Um, we would love for you to come in and try it next Wednesday. Um, will you join us? Comment below. Versus, right, posting something that says, click like for your chance to win 50% off our brand new pizza. Here's what it looks like. Comment below and tell me what you would name it if you can name our new product. We're going to pick a winner tomorrow at 2 p.m. Check back here on the wall to see if you won. Right? So setting the architecture of the incentive uh, plus the... Go- <laughs> what? <laughs> Go say hi. Eric's our head of development. Uh, we were just. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> Eric. It's, this is Joe. <laughs> hey. Nice to meet you, Good Eric. Day. How are you doing? Very well. It's uh, it's hard being a developer in the Facebook software space, isn't it? That's competitive. And it's fun though, right? Oh, very much. <laughs> that's why we're here so late, having having a blast. Pretty much. How do you stay up to date with all the changes, Eric? How do how do you stay well, abreast of everything that's going on? Well, uh, I work. It's a nine to five job, so you kind of just you, you make a little time every day to give it a. Give it over, so. He wishes it was nine to five. The real answer is you're an alpha. Say, it's nine That's o'clock at night. Eh? You mean nine in the night till five in the morning? <laughs> we're actually doing pretty good tonight. Typically, <laughs> these nights will go to uh, one or three in the morning. We're looking at eleven thirty midnight right now. Rock it out, brother man. Oh, cool. Good stuff. <laughs> so, do you, do you guys do you guys have Heyo hackathons? Just out of interest. <laughs> actually. Can you see? Can you see this one here? Hold on, you'd speak. Uh, hold on, let me ch- change the thingy. 
There we go. Very good. Nathan Latka coming up behind Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, but so yeah, so we'll, we'll do we'll do all kinds of fun stuff like that. But um, getting back to your question, it really is about the sentence architecture. It's about being consistent. And Joe, one of the things I'll say, this, you know, there was a whirlwind other folks that, again, uh, trying to keep up with Heyo is they release these tools which, look, I think they're interesting. I don't think they're very compelling or, or I don't think they add much value to small business owners. What they did is they would release things that made it easy for small business owners to just download a CSV of likes and comments. That wasn't real interesting if you actually put your mind in the mindset of the entrepreneur or the small business. What they were actually having problems doing is putting together the ideas of what to post on their Facebook page that would drive the most engagements. And then after they actually get the engagement, then they're interested in managing the entries and things like that and picking a winner. So I think a lot of other folks missed it. Uh, I, I, I tried a lot of the other ones. Frankly, they feel just old, outdated, and you, you, business owners don't want to be in Excel sheets reading through 50 people who like the post trying to figure out how to randomly pick a winner. you got to make it super easy. So we put out a tool. It's called the Timeline Contest Creator. Um, you mentioned, look, you're a smart marketer. You've seen it all over, I think, right? And, and what it does is it, it spits out ideas for anyone listening right now. They can go to heyo.com forward slash TCC, T as in Tom. It's the acronym for Timeline Contest Creator. And they can click show me ideas. And we'll just spin through ideas, Joe, that they can use totally free. And we really love that because we're understanding what's driving the most engagement. And then we can help new users drive a lot of engagement very, very quickly. Fantastic. Sounds amazing. So tell me what's happening in the mobile space, Nathan. What's what's going on with your with the mobile side of Heyo? Well, because I know you were one of the, the first to come out, if not the first, to come out with the the app for tabs on mobile because you can't you still can't see Facebook. So what's happening there? Yeah, hey, let me touch let me real quick fire question. What did you think? What what did you hear about some of the timeline contest updates? What what did you see? What was your opinion? What about the timeline contest updates before we go uh -huh. on to mobile? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was great. I love it. And one of the reasons I like it is the engagement factor. I yeah. think that one of the things that, that pages really need to uh, focus on, and I know, I mean, gosh, it's kind of a bit ego-driven, isn't it? We all want lots of fans. We all want hundreds yeah. of thousands of fans, which is a bit more about ego, I think, than anything else. Yeah. Um, because really, it doesn't matter. Um, you, you, you can do just as well with 10,000 fans as you can with, you know, 100,000 fans um, if you've got a really good um, uh, sorry my calendar suddenly popped up in front of my face then. Um, if you've got uh, incredible engagement with your fans. I mean, I've been looking, uh, we've got a new fan page. We had our old SNA fan page. We've got a new one, which is my new mm. uh, J Joe Barnes Online brand. And we've only got two and a half thousand likes at the moment. But we've got like 400 people talking on there, you know. So we've got Perfect. really good engagement. Um, and what we need to do as we grow the page, I'm far more interested in keeping that engagement figure high while while we grow the fans because it's the engagement that really is um, the most important part and what I loved about the timeline contest thing which again is kind of you know coming away from the tabs is that engagement, engagement. on the page in the yep. wall you know in the news feed everybody can get involved and uh, I was very excited by the timeline yep. contest well that's been well, good. So we're we're definitely on the same page then, and and I'm I'm happy to jump into why and how we were really the first out with the ability to do Facebook tabs on mobile devices. Um, we we were looking at the data, Joe, just like you were, he, listening to our customers, and many of them were telling us, look, we've got 30, 40, sometimes as high as 60 or 70 percent of their traffic coming from mobile devices. So. For those of you listening that may or may not understand software, it is actually that this was a really tricky um, uh, back-end technology challenge. Uh, we, in my opinion, have one of the top development teams when it comes to all the different app creation platforms out there. That's why we're so quick, and we have a platform again that just works and get, gets the job done. So they they figured it out, and what we then saw people wanting is they want one URL to use, and that one URL let's say they then email it out, to, they build the campaign, okay, they put on Facebook, they want to use that URL, they want to email it out to their email list, and then no matter if their people on their email list 
open the email on their desktop or their mobile device, they would see an appropriate, gorgeous experience. And with Heyo, you can do that. It's one URL, it's very simple, it's streamlined, and frankly, the people that have this as kind of their ace in their back pocket are getting 20 to 30% more out of their campaigns than people that are using platforms that don't allow you to do mobile. It's just a big opportunity people are missing if you're not doing it. And why do you think Facebook have made it so that tabs can't be seen from yeah. the, the app on mobile? Fantastic question, and I don't know. I don't know that that's not something that they are working on. In other words, they could be working on that right now. I don't know. Um, what I will tell you is that you know, if you go back and look at the Facebook Developer Conference from last year, and even uh, the, some of the content that's come out this year, um, everything when it comes to brands on Facebook starts on the Facebook page. And furthermore, what's been communicated is it starts with a story that you create which is the status update. So, you know, Joe, I, I do think people should be thinking about and optimizing for a world where Facebook apps, uh, mobile or desktop, don't exist in, in say, the next year to two years. Um, they should focus on engagement, the status updates, and then most importantly is how to grow the engagement on the status updates, whether it's mobile, right, because the status updates will show on mobile via the mobile app, the, you know, the Facebook native mobile app, um, or desktop, and then figure out how to build those campaigns to supplement them and to uh, amplify them with applications while applications are still around. I think that's really the future. Now that beautifully leads me into my next question actually <laughs> because we've been talking about the timeline contest and engagement on the wall we're now talking about the possibility of a future without the tabs and the apps there on the pages because everything's coming over to the page so let's have a uh, just five minutes on Facebook advertising campaigns because obviously there was a time when uh, it was uh, very popular to and I, I know because I taught it how to send Facebook ads two tabs and that keeping yeah. people on Facebook particularly when you wanted to do campaigns for people to opt in to leave you their name and email address that you sent your ad campaigns from Facebook ads to tabs because you were keeping people on Facebook they weren't going off of Facebook so therefore you would have this higher conversion rate lower cost per click because Facebook like you to keep pe people on Facebook etc recently we're finding obviously that we're getting much much higher conversions from page post ads rather than sending people from ads two tabs uh, which kind of goes with exactly what you're saying so just from that kind of Facebook ad campaign you obviously can't get people to sign up and opt in from your timeline uh, page uh, timeline wall anymore so people who are trying to build their lists and use Facebook to do so what's your recommendations for them my recommendation for that right now is to do a combination of the status update and the app uh, that's the best way to do that right now um, what I will tell you, though, is that um, the reason Facebook, I believe, will still keep apps around is because of what you just mentioned. They, look, we see, you know, there's people running very large campaigns with us right now, running a lot of money to their apps, and they are getting a fantastic return. Um, so it, it, it works really, really well if you do it right. What we've seen is a lot of people give up on it because they're not updating these apps, and they're not, they're not structuring the app for conversions or for um, the contest, for sharing and tweeting and, and bringing in more traffic to the page. So it's a combination of both. And um, something like posting a timeline contest update that says, um, click like for your chance to win a free consultation with Joe Barnes. We'll pick a winner tomorrow at 2 p.m. Click here to get more entries. When they click there to get more entries, it takes them to the app where they can click tweet, share, like, to get increase the likelihood that they win. Like, I think that's the perfect dichotomy of how the, the update should work with the app and how it still makes sense to drive the advertising into the page post because you'll naturally also be fueling the amplification through the app. Through the app. That's a, I, I really like that suggestion. <laughs> I think you may find that happening I, on the Joe Barnes page quite soon. I want 20% <laughs> <want 20 laughs> commissions on anything you make. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> um, Nathan, have you got any really good examples, case studies of small businesses, kind of mum and pup style businesses who are using your application and, and are, are absolutely crushing it on Facebook? 
Absolutely. So look, I'll talk about what we're really, really good at and what we think we're actually leading the market in, then talk about some of the future opportunities and what we're seeing initially with Timeline Contest Creator. So first, our core base, what, what Hayo really is about, and Joe, you know this, is the easiest way for brands like the ones listening to this right now to create Facebook campaigns that are also mobile optimized. So to highlight how easy this is, I'll tell you the story of the Kuiper brothers. It's three brothers. They're from the Midwest. Uh, one's 26, one's 23, and I think one's actually 18. And their father, his name is Randy Kuypers, he, founded, he found Heyo. And when, he, when they were sitting around the dinner table one night, the kids brought up an idea to launch these things called Zox straps, which they're straps that would go around your wrist, and essentially a new one would be released every month with different themes on it, current event related stuff, things like that. Well, long story short is he told the kids to use Heyo to grow the business and to launch it. And anyone listening right now, you can actually go to Zox, Z-O-X, Straps, their Facebook page, and you'll see they have three tabs. One's a VIP tab, one's a store tab, so they're selling through the app. Talk about positive ROI. I'll tell you, in this case, we should have asked for a percentage of sales because they have sold over a million dollars worth of their product. They're crushing wow. it. So they're doing a really, really good job. Uh, their first year, I think they did 300, 300-ish K, and the second year, they, they crushed past a million. So they, they're growing a big business. It's exciting, and they're doing really well. And they, again, these are folks that knew nothing about development, had very little business experiment. They were passionate. They drove engagement, and then they amplified their fan base, and it was all through the applications. So it was exciting. Wow. What, what, what would you say... That did make sense. Yeah, okay. I just want to. I just want to probe a little bit deeper, if that's all right, and say, what sure. would you say that their oh, secret sauce was? What would you say was sort of the main thing that they did that really drove that success. Yeah, it all started with the engagement. So they would yeah. post at the beginning of each month and say, "What do you want to see on Zock Straps this month?" And they listen to their fans and actually develop the product based on the fan feedback. So you know, Joe. If I told you, uh, Joe, I'm going to make a bracelet for you. What do you want on it? And you said, I want Joe Barnes the rock star, you know? And I made you a bracelet with Joe Barnes the rock star. You're going to be more likely to buy that, right? Because you feel like you created it, right? That's what brands have to do on Facebook. You have to create the engagement and the affinity with your, with your consumers to the point that they're actually creating the product. And guess what? Sales then becomes super easy. I'd buy the bracelet, the t-shirt, the hat. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Barnes, the rock star, <laughs> absolutely everywhere. <laughs> I love so, that. Um, Nathan, a lot of the people watching this, uh, a lot of a lot of my students, um, sometimes struggle to get their pages off the ground. You know, they they they'll come to me and they'll say, Joe, I'm posting and I'm posting and I'm posting, and you know, I just don't get any response. I don't get anybody coming back. How do I launch it? How do I get that engagement um, to begin with when I haven't got that many fans? Have you got any advice for those people? Yeah. I'm going to give advice right now, I'm, and I'm going to say this will work. What I'm about to say will work for anybody that has as little as even just 10 fans on their page. Okay, so he, here's the strategy: it starts with a well-crafted status update, with your goal being get those 10 people who have liked your page to engage again, just like Joe is doing on her page, where she's got more people talking about it then at one point she did even likes. You want to do that. Now this can be very difficult if you can't figure out the right status update to post to drive engagement. It's very difficult. What I would recommend, you know, is go, again it's totally free Joe, but go to heyo.com forward slash TCC and just copy our ideas. Just rip them right out of the product. <laughs> it's to, just copy it. Okay, put it on your page. Let it run and I guarantee you, you will get engagement. If you have at least 10, you'll get at least one person. We have a lot of confidence in the sentence architecture of these things. Um, so start with a status update. Once you're driving engagement and you post new content in the feed, excuse me, on your timeline, it'll show up more in the feeds of your, of your uh, people who have liked your page, your fans. And that's when it becomes a really good opportunity for you to pa start pairing the status updates, say once a month, with a campaign that's running on an app so that you can take your 10 fans, tell them to enter to win, go click like, tweet, and share to increase their chances of winning. Well, they're going to invite 
the 300 people in their network each. So you take 10 times 300, you get 3,000 new eyeballs, 10% of them convert, that's 300 new likes, rinse, wash, repeat. That's it, that's the math. Sounds pretty darn good and uh, uh, something I'm going to be trying when I get off this hangout. Now, <laughs> awesome. I, can <laughs> I cannot leave this hangout, Nathan, without asking you um, your view on, do you know, I hate to say it like this, I don't want to say Facebook versus Google because I think they're two very completely different oh, come on, platforms. Joe, hit, hit me with the hard stuff. <laughs> But moving forward, moving forward, you know, Google Plus is, it's growing, it's, I mean, it's, you know, it's its still full of mainly kind of technical people, I find, um, but it's growing and, you know, it's its kind of setting itself up for Google search and the fact that you need to be on G Plus to be able to have a, have a chance of being found on Google in the next few years, etc. Just kind of, what's your thoughts, really, on kind of Google Plus and, and Facebook? Yep. Look, it, it is 9.43 p.m. Eastern, okay, on a Thursday night. Virginia Tech Hokies are playing football. I'm spending my time here because I'm obsessed with Facebook. Here's the thing, though. I'm seeing the data come in from our customers, and I'm seeing the conversion rates and how fast they're building their business. I'm not even looking anywhere else uh, because it's working so, so well. So, Joe, look, I would love to be able to give you a... Uh, uh, say something here that would really fire up your user base, but I will tell you, we are seeing so much success with brands and Facebook. We're excited with the vision Facebook has for Facebook. You know, Mark wants to connect the rest of the five billion people in the world. Great. Once he does that hard work, we want to figure out how to give them better products and services from well-deserving brands that work for the engagement of those new users he's bringing in. So we're 100% we're focused on that. We're really excited about it. And you know what? I think there will be a time most likely, when Google Plus is going to be able to generate the same kind of results or even greater results than what our brands are currently seeing on Facebook. And at that time, we're going to, we'll dig in, see if there's an opportunity, and continue to grow our offering so that we can stay true, Joe, to our mission, which is to make it easier for small businesses and entrepreneurs to market themselves online. Wonderful answer. Absolutely wonderful answer. Um, so before we go, Nathan, my last question is, I'm putting you on the spot here, I'm sorry about this, um, but I like to end these interviews with giving our viewers something inspirational that they can take away with you. Is there any uh, anything you've watched or read or anybody that you've followed over your time? Uh, you're a very, very successful businessman with a mm. great business and uh, you're obviously very driven um, uh, and very motivated motivated and passionate about your business, uh, is there anything that you can recommend that our viewers go and read or watch or follow or anything that you think can help inspire them with their goals and dreams? Yeah, so, so you know, one thing I like to think about is, is human time. Uh, when we look at, when we look at, there's, based on the 2008 consensus in the United States, there's about 26 million small business owners, okay, in the U.S., if we can save each of those small business owners two hours a month, that's over 40 million hours of human life that we are saving. Okay, that's the two hours they're going to spend Google searching on how to code. That's the two hours they're going to spend hiring a freelancer off Odesk to try and help them build a Facebook campaign. If we can do that, you're literally saving human life. So, you know, that's exciting to me. And what I would tell people listening right now is your time is extremely precious. And one of the quotes that I live by is losers spend time planning perfect action while winners spend time taking imperfect action. So I would encourage everyone listening, take something from this, okay, and just take action even if it's imperfect because you'll learn from it and you'll grow your business. And that's what I'd say. Oh, I love that. I absolutely yeah. love that. that is that's a tweetable, brilliant. Joe. That is a tweetable. That's the quote that's going to go underneath this video <laughs> when it's on the on the blog post. That is fantastic. Good. All right, I am not going to take up any more of your time. Nathan Lacker, you've been amazing. That has been a fantastic interview. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you, Joe, so much for having me. I really appreciate it. If any of your folks have questions, I hope just come ask us on our fan page. We're always there. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you go to heyo.com <laughs> <laughs> forward slash TCC. Check out the uh, Heyo app. I know I'm going to be going there straight after this interview. Thank you very much for joining me um, and uh, have a fantastic day. Nathan, I'll see you again very soon.
Take care, Joe. I'll see ya. Okay, bye-bye.